So uh, this is the editor, virtually completed. Uh, maybe a few tweaks to do, not a lot. Um, if you listen to the AX80, it's got some weird twanky sound on preset or patch A2. And if I show you here, this is the same piano because I've just changed the patch manually on the AX80. So if I select the piano on here, you can see that this has changed. And all the parameters, it's showing parameter E1 because that's the last thing I edit by sending commands to it. Um, so the display has changed. The program is still the same. It's still A1, but or A2 I should say, but I've just sent all the parameters over MIDI in one go. Uh, so the editor is in charge. The editor sends all the parameters every time you select a patch. So if I select the next patch, e-piano, you can see things have changed. I'm not sending any program changes, I'm just sending edits. Clavichord. And I can basically change the sound in real time. We really need three hands for this. Or maybe the editor in front of the AX rather than on top of it. So that's that as far as that goes. Now what I've got in the memory is five banks of 64 which are RAM sounds and four banks. So if I go into the setup menu and scroll through to set bank, I've got set bank which is RAM which is patches 33 to 96. I can also check set that to bank 1, bank 2, bank 3, bank 4. Now what that does is it says when you've received a SysX bank over the MIDI, load it into the higher program numbers, in other words, all the way up to 288. Um, and that means that you can basically store five banks. You could you could make it do more, but I don't see any reason why anyone need more than five banks of memories. So that's how you, you can send um, patches now from your AX80 to this or from your door to this. So it's got two MIDI inputs, one from the AX80, one from your, your door. This one's receiving notes, etc. This one's just receiving SysX. And then the out goes to, back to the AX80. And there's a, no MIDI loop on this either. So that's what you can do with that. You hit back, you get back to your program. So let's go through what the menu options are. So obviously you've got your MIDI channels. Um, it's full fingers, isn't it? You've got your MIDI channel in, which is currently set to one, MIDI channel out, which you can set to any to any, any of the channels you want. So effectively you can translate the MIDI channel. I don't know why you'd want to, because the uh, um, AX80 is capable of receiving on any MIDI channel, so you can set those. Um, then you've got the encoder type, which basically just allows you to set the direction of the encoder to your own preferences. So you can have type one or type two. I use type one, which is normal. Then you've got send MIDI params, and this basically turns it from master to dumb mode. If it's set to send params, then basically every time you call up a patch in the editor, you don't send the program change, you just send the patch data over MIDI as, sys as CC messages and the AX80 responds um, and changes the patch accordingly. If you turn that off and send it, set it to off, then basically the the editor only sends a program change to the um, AX80 and it, you can still use the editor but the sound in the editor might be different to the sound in the AX80 or the sound settings in the editor might be this might be different because they're not in sync so you use it as a master basically um, then your next setting is the bank of course as we did before Load factory. Now, this what this does um, is basically if you say yes, it loads factory and 
loads all the original ROM sounds for your AX18 to presets 1 to 32 and it'll also choose the correct EEPROM because you can set the ROM up that you have either IK or L in the settings as well. So that's just loaded all the patches, one, two, three, there we go. All the patches loaded as they would be in the original with the names. Um, although the X8 itself doesn't have any names, I've added the names so you know what they are. Go back to settings and then load factory. Load RAM. Okay, so what this does <coughs> is it loads the factory RAM patches, either from ROM I or ROM K and L, into patch locations 33 to 96. So you basically have got all the standard factory patches in the editor, which you can then control the X80 with. So that's load RAM. Then send RAM basically will send the same 64 patches from 33 to 96 on the MIDI out to whatever is receiving now. It currently receiving is your AX80, but well, that could be your door as well. It can send the patches out to the door. It doesn't send um, the patch names with it. It just basically sends um, the um, patches themselves numbered not 63, uh, like the standard format. I guess if you wanted to, you could, we could add the patch name. Well, that'd be quite complex to do because you need a lot of bytes to store the 30, well, 13 more bytes at least to store the patch name. But you could do that. Um, but at the moment, it doesn't store the patch names over the SysX, just like the standard AX80 doesn't. There's your ROM types. You've got ROM I and ROM KL. And that will basically define which factory ROM and factory RAM patches you load from the memory um, and then you've got your MIDI channel again so that's about it really on the settings so you say back I'll take you out of there back to the main menu save basically saves a patch so if you're editing you can save a patch wherever you want in any position from um, from 1 to 200 and well to 999 but really because your factory patches, it depends whether you're going to use this as a, as a master. If you, if you use it as a master, it really doesn't matter where you save your patches. Um, because you can send, you're only sending parameters every time, so you can save them anywhere, the patches, and you can name them. That's if you're going to keep the editor with your AX80. What I thought most people do is they basically work on the patches with the editor, and then um, if they're taking the X80 out on the road, they might just want to send the SysX to the X80 and I've done with it, it's, it's loaded with all their favourite patches. There's various ways you can do it, but basically this editor will store 999 patches. Um, first 32 being the ROM, and you can edit them if you want to, um, but I'd store them somewhere else so you've always got like a, sort of a, a default set. If you ever do overwrite them, you could just call them back anyway as a bank of 32. And so as you scroll through the patches, you'll see all the let's change which show you roughly what it's doing so wave here would be no lights would be first wave then the second wave then the third wave then the fourth wave then back again to the beginning so effectively you get to re remember what the lights do and select envelope select is basically one two or three just like the original and you can see it's changing there. Same with LFO select. Got LFO select there. So you can switch through your LFOs. And that's about it really. It's um, pretty much finished now. I don't really want to do any more work on it. I've posted the code to GitHub and the schematics. Uh, you can build it if you want to. I'm not making any PCBs. Um, I will answer questions of course but that's about it okay yes.